What's up guys, Steven Dexter. Welcome back to another YouTube series. And today I'm gonna to talk about two important concepts that I developed that for beginners to how to really recognize, you know, what's the most useful patterns out there. And a lot of people that are inventing patterns and uh, some of it are scams, some of it are real. And as a beginner, I know that confusions of, you know, you don't know which one is real, which one's fake. You don't know which one to study because you don't wanna waste time on the fake ones. I know something that most don't. So today I'm gonna to give you two concepts that could help you recognize those patterns much easier to really figure out and know which one can be profitable, which one is not. So I'm gonna introduce the first one, which is changeable factor. So changeable factors are people who are inventing factors that it's already out there. So what does that mean? That means like something like double top, cup or handle, a lot of well-known pattern like moving averages, RSI, those are very basic standard knowledge that you have to learn once you get into the stock market, you know what is market cap. But in terms of indicators, that RSI, moving average, VWAP, then double top, double bottom, and those type of indicators that everybody knows. We're trying to learn how to really find the correct pattern to trade. If you put this concept into 90% people lose money in stock market, 10% people make money in stock market, you can kind of notice that a lot of people are trying to learn the same thing, which is all those indicators out there that is in the books and everybody's talking about. Because of those indicators, they're not very stable. They're changeable factors. That means if there's a lot of people using it, and it can turn into the opposite ways. The fundamental thing about stock market is, let's say we have 10 people, then we have this one trend going back and forth. It's a fresh chart and nobody has touched it yet before and you announce some type of news and everybody's using the same pattern. So nine people are using the same pattern and nine people are doing the opposite. Now the results will be that one person will win, pretty much win all the money from all those nine people. And those nine people will likely to lose money. If you put this concept and correlating with what I just talked about, that everybody's trying to learn the same thing, same indicators, VWAP, uh, moving averages, and RSI. So the reason why all those indicators that only work about 30 to 40% of the time is because all those concepts that exist behind it, which is nine people lose money, one people win money. And that's the fundamental of the stock market. If you're not trying to be profitable, you gotta think outside the box. Now let's talk about unchangeable factors. Now there's two things that you cannot be changeable, especially when the stock already formed its own pattern or it's already formed its own history. That's why a lot of people talk about history tends to repeat again and again. That's somehow right and somehow wrong. So today I'm going to give you like how to really recognize, you know, some history do repeat some time to history doesn't repeat. Let's go into from the very basics. So we all know offering, warrants, and financing. Those are the three things that can be, you know, really mess with the technical analysis. And when the stock decides to do an offering, it decides to do a warrant, stock instant drops about 70-75% of the time in one candle. So you can't really exit out of that position. And when you're going long into a stock, you're pretty much going to lose all your money. Now, that's an unchangeable factor. It's because, think about it like this way. So if there's only certain amount of shares for you to be able to trade, let's say uh, it's a simple supply demand question. Let's say if you only have 10 shares to trade and there's 10 people to trade this stock and stock can be you know, bouncing back normally because those 10 people are buying and selling. Now, suddenly in one day and the supply instant become 100. There's too many shares for 10 people to buy in that specific day volume, then supply demand. If supply goes up, demand goes down or stay the same, suddenly the stock drops massively. That's the very basic things about you know, supply and demand. Now, let's talk about opposite things. So unchangeable factors can be also applied into the opposite way. Now, when the stock decides to do a reverse play, they will increase the stock price and reduce its float. Now, that's how small caps tends to survive in the overall market. They are trying to reduce the entire you know, flow size, which is how many shares are available for an investor to trade or retail people to buy. Uh, they reduce about you know, 20 times, 50 times, and then suddenly like, 20 million shares become uh, 2 million shares or like uh, 200K shares. When they reduce the flow, that means they're reducing the supply. Now, if that specific entry day is generating a lot of volume, that means there's a lot of demand plus really low supply, that means the stock is likely to go up. That's why small caps tends to go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000% of the time. 
Now, those are unchangeable factors. That means that if stock decides to do that, and you can't really change the outcome, but you can take advantage of that outcome. So hopefully you guys understand all the concept that it's above. If there's too many people using the same strategy, it tends to fail. If that's a changeable factor, an unchangeable factor is stock decides to do something that everybody can see it, that increasing the flow size or reducing the flow size. Let's say a massive event that already happened and the outcome is already there. Now you can take advantage of the outcome. That's where you know, the patience comes in. A lot of people are talking about, you know, you need to have massive patience. Patience always wins. And you need to know how to really use that patience to take advantage of people already lost money and tend to make back their money to use their psychology to benefit your trading odds. So let me give you an example. So let's talk about history tends to repeat again. So there's two unchangeable factors that, be, that can exist out there. One, it will be a warrant and offering. Reverse split can reduce or increase its flow size. So amount of supply can be changed within a day. Now, let's give you a really good example about Bitcoin. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. So back in two years, Bitcoin increased to almost $20,000. At that time, everybody's talking about Bitcoin and how good Bitcoin is. And suddenly Bitcoin dropped from, you know, to 20,000 to 4,000 or 3,000. It dropped almost 90% of its own gain. Now, the reason after that is when you're trying to guess how high Bitcoin can go while it's, you know, pushing to that 20,000, you never know because you don't know what will happen in the future. Now, once the Bitcoin failed from that 20,000 and you formed a chart already, it becomes an outcome. The Bitcoin went parabolic to 20,000. It came back down, went up a little bit and consolidated in that $15,000 area for like a couple months, then boom, dropped into 10,000 and 6,000 and 3,000. So this is one of the unchangeable factor about the Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin tends to keep going flat for two years and it tends to spike into that $15,000 area again, you won't know there's a lot of people trying to sell because they bought Bitcoin at 15,000 and they have no idea why Bitcoin works and how Bitcoin works. When the Bitcoin tends to go back to the same level where they bought, they are likely to sell. So that is an unchangeable factor and also is a human nature. So those two concepts should answer all of you guys' questions. What's the difference between the market conditions on you know, 2018, 2019 and why the overall market is changing? You know, a lot of people are learning the same fundamental thing that a lot of people are trying to learn at the same time. It's all the indicators that are using that doesn't really work because there's too many people using it and they don't really know the psychology behind it or how it works. What's the human nature behind RSI? What's the human nature behind, you know, double top? I would say 90% people don't really know what's the psychology behind it. And also what's the human nature behind uh, moving averages as well. If you don't understand it, do not learn that type of indicator because it will not work. Trying to find a pattern that also involves human nature. I think this type of method works in every single market. Doesn't really matter. It's options, futures, and forex. You need to find a pattern that involves human nature, involves history. Now, the third thing you need is data, which I always talk about. So once you find the pattern as a beginner, it will be very easy for you to stay very consistent, profitable, because you only need to find one pattern. And you just trade that one pattern for a while. In the meantime, you can research for other patterns as well. So personally, I tend to look for that type of you know, three conditions at the same time to find to create new patterns, to find new patterns. I know it will be a little bit confusing. I know that the content and the concept will be a little bit confusing. I try to go back at the beginning of the video and watch it about two to three times. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Make sure to click the like button and subscribe. I will see you guys next video.